Published 1702 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 27th of October 2018. Updated 1702 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 27th of October 2018. Edward Byrne Jones, State Britain, London. Until February 24th rating, the first time Victorian painter Edward Byrne Jones had a major retrospective at the Tate. In 1933, the exhibition was opened by the leader of the Conservative Party, Stanley Baldwin. Now Byrne Jones, last of the pre-Raphaelites, is back, though Theresa May is possibly too busy to take in an occasionally overwhelming show by the painter whose faux medieval fantasies had a profound effect on Rudyard Kipling and J.R.R. Tolkien. Over seven rooms there are scores of cartoons, sketches, paintings, tapestries and decorative pieces. These include part of the piano Burne Jones decorated for his new wife Georgiana with a side-carrying figure of death and, for the first time in public, the Perseus and Briar Rose cycles. Violence is seldom far away and there is so much armor in this show it clanks. Only the men-at-arms in Briar Rose, his intoxicating, highly stylized retelling of Sleeping Beauty, are silent, lost in a drowsy world of creeping thorns and tendrils, in Laos Veneris, 1873-75. Above, Venus is literally a scarlet woman, dressed in vivid red and emitting a languid sexual energy. It was inspired by an Algernon Swinburne poem the figures show Burne Jones's debt to his hero Michelangelo. He once spent a day on his back looking up at the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel through opera glasses and, in the pale, slightly sinister Sleeping Beauty in the series' final painting, his abiding belief that women are inherently dangerous creatures. Just how dangerous becomes apparent in the room of big, bravery exhibition works from 1877 onwards that made Byrne Jones's reputation, electrifying London and then Europe. In Laos Veneris, Venus is literally a scarlet woman, dressed in vivid red and emitting a languid sexual energy that will overpower the knights gathered at her window. Nearby, the beguiling of Merlin, where the wizard finds himself trapped and powerless before Nimu, the spell-weaving Lady of the Lake, has all Byrne Jones's decorative appeal but is also a work of real psychological depth. Byrne Jones was closely involved with the revival of stained-glass art, and his work can be seen in churches around England. Burne Jones created this world of classical mythology and Arthurian legend to escape the world he was already in. Born in 1833, he was a Birmingham boy who came of age just as the Industrial Revolution was blotting out what was left of the city's greenery. He fled to theology in Oxford, where he met the like-minded William Morris, and then abandoned religion for art when he apprenticed himself to Dante Gabriel Rossetti, founder of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. Rossetti declared young Burne Jones's intricate ink drawings, like the dizzyingly busy Buon del Monte's wedding, on display with early drawings, unequaled by anything unless perhaps all Brecht Durer's finest works. That's laying it on thick, but Burne Jones, the anti-capitalist visionary who became a baronet, always attracted hyperbole. English conservatives were appalled by his eroticism, the French thought he was a genius. The irony is, it's the contemporary portraits that Burne Jones painted privately for family, friends and his great love Francis Graham that emerged from the briars and quietly but which, restrained in. Intensely personal, this is genuinely moving art, but, 120 years after his death, I sense it's Burne Jones's nightly vision that has the strongest pull, hopefully the Tate shop has stocked up on Merlin tote bags, this one is going to be big.